Thank you all very much, uh, and good morning. Uh, it is fantastic to see so many people uh, here uh, at the Lincoln Theater to help us uh, really kick off uh, a, our next set of solicitations uh, uh, for the Deputy Mayor's Office for Planning and Economic Development. Um, you know, as, as the video showed, there's a lot of change. There's a lot of opportunity that's happening in Washington, D.C., and one of the reasons why we wanted to have this event was, again, to bring people together. Um, just on that note, uh, just audience participation time, how many developers do we have in the crowd? If they can raise their hands, please. Fantastic. Uh, how many uh, contractors, uh, construction contractors? Fantastic. Uh, how many uh, 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 different other kinds of, if you're not a developer, you're not a contractor, but you want to have work on these projects, raise your hand. Everybody else. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, again, I am Brian Kenner. I'm the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development. Uh, and again, very excited that, that everybody was able to join us for March Madness. Uh, did anybody have Michigan State in their final four? No, no. Oh, I've got one right here. Okay, one, one person right here. That thing is Will Liggins, as a matter of fact. Had it. Um, so fantastic to see so many different groups of people here today. We've got local developers, community organizations, uh, neighborhood associations, small businesses, as well as many, many interested and engaged D.C. residents here. Um, that's really what today is about, is again, bringing people together to help unveil some new district projects uh, that we think will not only have great potential for opportunity, but also, if done right, will have a fantastic impact on the neighborhoods in which they are located. Uh, first, I'd like to thank my team and the Deputy Mayor's Office for Planning and Economic Development, uh, particularly the individual project managers that are working on many of these projects that are going to be announced today. Uh, they are going to be available in the, in the lobby as you exit, uh, and we will also reference them during the discussion here so you'll know who they are. Uh, but before we uh, talk about these projects, it is my distinct pleasure and honor uh, to introduce the mayor of the District of Columbia, uh, Muriel Bowser, who on the eve of her first State of the District address has joined us here today. Uh, in her short tenure, she has been extremely active, and obviously those of us who are inside the administration know exactly how active she has been. Um, she has set many, many goals uh, for the Deputy Mayor's Office, as well as the Economic Development Cluster Agencies, and we've re achieved some results. Um, we have announced, uh, the Mayor announced the first uh, a partnership with Howard University around technology uh, and a hub, potentially for uh, venture capital uh, companies, again, to complete the tech ecosystem here in the District of Columbia. Uh, she's unveiled new plans to develop the Fletcher Johnson campus in Ward 7. Uh, she's assisted Local 25, a local union, and D.C. United in coming together to agree on a labor peace agreement. Uh, she has signed an agreement for the long-awaited development that is at uh, Hill East, uh, as well as expanding the district's summer youth jobs program. Uh, without further ado, please, welcome, please uh, join me in welcoming the mayor, Muriel Bowser. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the fabulous Lincoln Theater. Isn't she beautiful? Yes, and we're going to be here tomorrow night, too, to talk about the state of the District of Columbia. And I couldn't be more proud to be here with my economic development team. Don't we have a fantastic deputy mayor for economic development? I think many of you have worked with Brian um, over the, the years. He worked for Mayor Fenty, he worked for Mayor Gray, and most recently he was the city administrator for the city of Tacoma Park. Um, and I was lucky to steal him. Um, and, and he's back with us, and he has a wonderful team that throughout this morning he is going to introduce to you um, the entire cluster uh, for economic development. I also want to recognize my friends from the council who have joined us here today, the Ward 1 Council Member and Host Council Member, Brianne Nadeau. Brianne, where are you? Give her a big round of applause. There she is, right in the front. Uh, and the At-Large Council Member uh, for, for housing. And we're all for housing, right? And I'm just going to call you that. The Council Member for Housing, Anita Bonds. Give her a big round of applause. 
I want to thank all of uh, you, uh, our great partners, in getting the work done in the district that we need to get done. Uh, I know you've come out uh, because you're interested, but also uh, you want to lend your support uh, to what's important to our economic development strategy here in D.C. We want our city to be the best place to live, work, and play. Uh, we want to be a city that continues to grow and, to con and continues to make more people and more of our business is part of that progress. Uh, the district's economy has made a tremendous amount of progress in recent years. Uh, more people are moving here. More residents are spending their dollars locally than ever before. And we continue to attract more foreign and direct investment. And our credit rating is getting better and better and better, which tells everybody that Wall Street thinks that the District of Columbia is a great place to do business. Uh, but we know we have more work to do. Uh, last week, I embarked on a tour to announce bold programs and clear-cut solutions uh, that will allow more people to enjoy and participate in the growing prosperity of D.C. So when it comes to economic development, there are five priorities uh, of the Bowser administration as we embark on protecting and preserving a pathway to the middle class. First, we want to protect, preserve, and produce more affordable housing in Washington, D.C. Who's with me? We want to support innovation and entrepreneurship. Who's with me? I know you are, Anna Harvey. We want to make district government a partner to business, community, and particularly our small businesses. Yes. We want to drive investment and development, particularly in overlooked and underserved communities in the District of Columbia. And we want to prepare our residents for the jobs that businesses and government are filling today and plan for the jobs of the future. And that's a good thing. We want to make sure D.C. residents are working. So I am confident uh, that the projects we announced today will help us to achieve these goals. But if we want to meet the needs of D.C. residents and stay economically competitive with other cities, we have to do some big things. First, we have to better engage our communities in meaningful ways throughout the development process. And second, we have to help foster small and local business growth, many of whom provide good paying jobs for D.C. residents. So with that, I'm announcing two things today. First, we are announcing our RFP, the district's first community-based RFP process that looks to engage D.C. residents and request public input prior to the development solicitation process. So here's how our RFP will work. Through a series of public engagement sessions, we will request input on goals and priorities that district residents want to see on a specific project. The goal is to establish a process that is transparent to residents and holds the district accountable for building a project that reflects the interest of the community. I am pleased that Parcel 42, a Ward 6 property in Shaw, will be the first location for the Our RFP process. That's good news. Today we're also announcing Compete DC. Compete DC is a four-part program led by DSLBD. And if you haven't had a chance to meet our new director, Anna Harvey, Anna, please give a wave to everybody. And we're delighted that she's joined our administration. This program is designed to help small businesses in the district expand and give them greater access to business opportunities. The first part uh, is the CEO Growth Academy. It's going to be an extensive six-month training program for CEOs and executives of emerging real estate and construction firms. Registration for the CEO Growth Academy begins today. 
Other Compete DC programs are set to roll out in the coming months, and DSLBD is refocused its mission to make sure small businesses are growing in DC. So with all the convening power in this room uh, and today's announcements of new programs and projects that we're looking for your partnership on, we're ready to get to work. So let's establish the ways to support our small businesses and build affordable housing, preserve affordable housing, and invest in development projects that enhance the great neighborhoods of the District of Columbia. And I'm looking forward to working with you and our economic development team every step of the way. Thank you for your interest. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to recognize a few uh, other directors from the Economic Development Cluster in particular that are here. Uh, I see Melinda Bowling and I see Tommy Wells over here on this side from DCRA and DDOE. On this side, I see lots of folks. Uh, I see Deb Carroll from the Department of Employment Services. I see Eric Shaw from the Office of Planning. I see Maria Day Marshall from the Housing Finance Agency. I see Anna Harvey from DSLBD. And I see Lisa Tony from the Arts and Humanities Commission. So thank you all very much for joining us here as well. Uh, DOES, a lot of acronyms, I apologize. The Department of Employment Services, the Department of Small and Local Business Development, the Department of Housing and Community Development, the Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs, the Department of the Environment, Department of uh, Arts and Humanities Commission all have tables that are out in the lobby area uh, distributing some additional information that can be helpful to people. So just wanted to recognize that. Uh, next on the program, I'd like to introduce our Director of Real Estate Development, Sarosh Opadwala. Uh, he's going to go through some of the specific projects that we're going to be announcing today, as well as give you a little bit more detail uh, on those projects. Uh, Sarosh joins us most recently, I think, from Clark Construction, uh, but has a wealth of experience on the private side as well as the public side. We're extremely excited to, uh, to, to have him join our team, and he will be available afterwards as well if you have any additional questions. So thank you and welcome, Sarosh. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Kenner. I see a lot of familiar faces out there, and I look forward to meeting uh, and working with everybody involved. My door is always open, and I encourage everybody to reach out to me in my office if we can be of assistance. We are very excited to issue these solicitations from the largest that encompasses over 400,000 square feet to smaller neighborhood infill projects. Each parcel, regardless of size, has the potential to be a catalyst for their neighborhoods and to provide opportunities for the entire spectrum of the business community, from established companies to medium-sized firms growing and to CBEs developing their books of business. Our goal is to reinvigorate neighborhoods and to issue the right parcels at the right times. Let's get started with our parcels. Our first one is a large parcel, 59,000 square feet. It is located just north of Waterfront Met Metro Station. Uh, Waterfront Station 2 is bookended by incredible development at the wharf and the growing footprint of the ballpark district to the east. This Ward 6 site is ripe for residential development with extensive ground floor retail and amenities to be enjoyed by residents as well as visitors, such as visitors to Arena Stage, which is to the southwest. Mark Blyer, if you could please stand up, is the project manager. Thank you, Mark. He will be outside to answer questions in the future. Next up is another parcel within close proximity to a major district redevelopment. Capitol Vista is a stone's throw from Capitol Crossing, also in Ward 6, which will bring over 1 million square feet of office, residential, and retail to the neighborhood. This unique parcel is also directly west of JBG's recently completed 778th Street Walmart project, the construction of which you can see on the map, although it is now complete. The location offers excellent opportunities for creative, high-density residential or commercial that leverages the sites that are nearby the development as well as major transportation hubs. Lee Goldstein, please stand up, is the project manager for the – there. there's Lee – project manager for the project, and he will answer additional questions. Third on our list is another proximity RFP, Truxton Circle in Ward 5. 
is uh, northwest of the expansive Noma neighborhood and across the street from several publicly announced developments on P Street and Florida Avenue. In addition to our larger parcels, Dempet is dedicated to providing small but valuable parcels, which we hope will encourage CBE development, such as Truxton, for urban infill and neighborhood development. Uh, Sega Berkel is the project manager of Sega Stand Up. He will be outside there, Sega. He'll be outside to answer more questions. Each of the projects has a project data sheet outside at the table for you to uh, pick up and answer up. Uh, questions. Um, finally, we have two additional parcels coming up that exemplify the creative and progressive approach of our office that endeavors to undertake collaboration with the community, the industry, and the residents of Washington, D.C. As Mayor Bounce Bowser mentioned, we are excited to unveil our RFP concept, a collaborative community-based approach to developing RFPs. The framework and our principles of the RFP concept our engagement with community, transparency in our process, and accountability in the final product. The framework also provides greater certainty and predictability for the industry in moving forward with the product, which will provide a win-win for the community, the industry, and the district. The community engagement uh, process will provide an additional step in our due diligence when we're creating the RFPs. We are excited to pilot for the RFP, Ward 6 is Parcel 42, which is a well-known development site, and we expect that uh, it will be able to leverage the new process to solve for strong community-integrated development projects. Finally on our list, we are issuing another creative community-integrated process to activate an underfunded area of the city, which is Ward 8's Anacostia Gateway. This solicitation is a collaborative effort with other district agencies, including DHCD, whereby we are combining adjacent sites and asking the industry and the community to be creative in developing a plan where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. This solicitation includes Demped's 1909 Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue, which is on the left, and four DHC parcels on Good Hope Road, which are on the right. DEMPED is pleased to be working with DHCD and DHCD's leadership on this project. And with that, I'm happy to introduce Polly Donaldson to tell us more about their parcels in this solicitation, as well as other projects they are planning in the city. Polly Donaldson is the director of the Department of Housing and Community Development, DHCD, and she has over 27 years of experience in affordable housing and community development. Please welcome Polly Donaldson. Good afternoon. I, I want to thank you, Sir Roche, very much for that introduction. And, of course, it's always a pleasure to be here with Mayor Bowser and Deputy Mayor Kenner. Um, we're, we're, DHCD is terrifically excited to be part of this joint Anacostia Gateway, RFEI, that is Request for Expressions of Interest, with DEMPED. Uh, the Anacostia Gateway is where DHCD is headquartered. And every day, out my office window, I see the potential and unique opportunity for this to be a gateway to opportunity. And I look forward to hearing from those who are in the community and in the industry for what your vision is for the Anacostia Gateway. I'm also here today to talk about Haley Terrace in Southeast in, uh, because that is one solicitation that DHCD will be offering to the development community in April. You can see that there are three lots here included in the solicitation outlined in red. Two lots are adjoining, and one lot is further down the block. But all three are on Haley Terrace in, uh, in the Bellevue neighborhood in Ward 8. That neighborhood's at the southernmost point of the district. Uh, the site also, um, are there, you can see three uh, buildings that are semi-detached, two-story brick buildings, four units in each with basements and a large area in the rear that could accommodate some parking. These site characteristics are consistent with other properties in the Bellevue neighborhood, which has many garden apartments, one high-rise apartment building, and some 1940s-era detached homes with yards. Uh, the response to the solicitation will need to be consistent with the Office of Planning Small Area Plan for the neighborhood, which expresses a vision 
for the transformation of selected sites, including these, into a mix of uses, including housing, retail, and office. Uh, the zoning existing is R5A, which is a moderate density residential zone permitting single family and duplex dwelling development by right. There will be affordability requirements as part of the solicitation. The developer must demonstrate that 20 percent of all new units created shall be affordable to households with incomes at or below 80 percent of AMI. And there will be also a minimum affordability period for home ownership 15 years, for rental housing 40 years. We project that we're going to release the solicitation by the end of April, and we will post it on our website, and of course it will be on the DEMPED website as well. As a reminder, once these presentations are concluded, the DHCD team will be available in the foyer. Karanja Slaughter is here as the project manager. Karanja, could you stand up? Thank you. And he is the lead for DHCD and will be at the DHCD table to answer any questions. Again, we're really wonderfully proud to be able to participate in this March Madness event with the mayor and DebPed and other agencies. And I now turn it back over to Deputy Mayor Brian Kenner. Thank you. Thank you very much, Polly. Um, we are actually at the close of the event. Um, one of the things that I wanted to acknowledge is that um, we're going to have information about each one of these projects up on both the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development's website as well as DHCD's website. The actual release of these solicitations is probably going to be in two weeks. The reason for that is we want to give people an opportunity to talk a little bit about it. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to have this event. Uh, was specifically for people to jointly find out about the opportunities, but also think a little bit about who their teaming partners might be, because we very much want to facilitate and encourage collaboration as it relates to, to many of these projects. Um, with that, again, we will have uh, project managers out in the lobby area that will have fact sheets as well as uh, will be available uh, for individual conversations. We've got uh, some of our district agencies have some tables out there. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for joining us here today, and go forth and do great things. Thank you very much.